You're watching the KUSI News at 6. And welcome back to the KUSI News at 6. As many of us find ourselves looking at screens the majority of the day, many are becoming more concerned about their eyesight or getting annoyed with the fact that their eyesight is having problems. So here to talk about reversing eye problems through corneal reconstructive surgery is Dr. Manoj Matwani, and we have a couple of his patients, Lori Hales and Brad Thompson. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, first of all, developing this because there is such a need and this is truly groundbreaking technology or groundbreaking yeah. construction that you're talking about. We are doing procedures with a system called topographic guided ablation that was FDA approved and brought out <clears throat> in early 2016. We initially used the system to create a better than normal human cornea, a more perfect cornea to create better than normal human vision. I wrote several papers on this and we get better vision, clearer vision, more vision, better night vision. This is also something that could be used, for example, on athletes to decrease brain processing time and allow for faster reaction time. We believe that's the case also. And this is something that my patients like to call bionic vision. <laughs> it definitely sounds that way. But what's more important to me is we can use this system to repair and restore and reconstruct corneas that have been damaged by disease, by trauma, or by past surgery. <clears throat> What we do with these is we can restore patients and vision, sorry, vision in patients that have had past surgery, whether it's RK, LASIK, PRK, corneal transplant, all of these surgeries. But these problems happen by disease also. For example, there's 100,000 people in the United States, sorry, in California alone, that have keratoconus, which is a disease that destroys and warps the cornea. This disease is incredibly disabling and causes loss of vision. All we could do for years was contacts mm -hmm. and cornea transplants. And that's what happened to Brad. Brad actually had cornea transplants because his eyes were destroyed, his corneas were destroyed by keratoconus. Mm -hmm. What we do now today, doctors are treating keratoconus with corneal cross-linking. Corneal cross-linking freezes the cornea so it doesn't progress anymore but doesn't restore the vision. We reconstruct the cornea, and we fix the cornea to make the vision better and then freeze it with corneal cross-linking. We're one of two centers in the United States doing this. I wrote the repair protocol for this. Um, Lori's had this procedure. She had surgically induced uh, keratoconus corneal ectasia. She's had this procedure. But the next place beyond here, where I'm the only one in California, the next place is in Vancouver. So you're not talking about a, a temporary fix. This is a permanent Long reconstruction yeah. of the cornea, and, and it, it handles a myriad of issues. Brad, let's start with you, because you had a corneal problem that was disease impact. Tell me about your surgery and, and how you are now versus what you were dealing with. Yeah, in, in 1994, I was diagnosed with keratoconus, and between 1994 and 1995, the disease progressed like rapidly. So my only option at that time was a corneal transplant, mm -hmm. just to be able to see, just to be able to wear glasses, sort of, or even contacts comfortably. And at that point in time, I was stuck wearing what they call RGP contact lenses, which is the rigid gas permeable contact lenses, which sound just as difficult as they feel. <laughs> so I wore that for about 10 years, and I, it's just so disabling for me. I, I'm contact lens intolerant you know I, I just I kind of found myself right back to square one feeling like I had keratoconus again even though I had the uh, transplants and thanks to the, the uh, organ donors that allowed that to happen but um, so I ended up just searching out and going to uh, Los Angeles I thought that was maybe where I can get something done that had the technology and I know that doctor uh, wanted to help me the best he could but I spent about eight years commuting back and forth just to try to get some stuff done and the surgeries that I had uh, just regressed and came right back to where I was and so I found myself kind of at a, a point where I just needed something out there and and sure enough I was you know looking online and came across Dr. Montwani's uh, paper and it's a paper I've read before in the past and I didn't realize it was in San Diego so sure enough I, I called and I was in his office that week and um, I think it wasn't even that long and he started working on me he was so passionate about it and I was waiting as I had before with other doctors to say you know sorry we, we know about your condition but we don't really treat it um, 
you know, kind of best of luck to you. You know, with Motwani, it was a lot different. It was like, I can help you. And, uh, you know. And so this has been a life changer for you. How are your eyes now? Oh, yeah. I mean, right now, I don't have any correction in them. They're starting to work together for the first time since I was diagnosed with the, the disease. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. He, he was able to, to do a laser procedure without doing, like, incisions that I'm used to. They did what they call an AK for astigmatism. And to me, I think that just added more scarring and more astigmatism irregularity. And he was able to do it on a lot smoother level that I didn't think was possible. Lori, uh, I'm curious with you because you're another success story, but I want to talk about the, the process itself. Because, I mean, the discussion that we're having, it sounds like it's going to be painful. There's going to be problems. I mean, we're talking about our eyes, but you've had this procedure. Tell me about it from your perspective. Um, there was a little bit of pain for a few weeks, um, kind of an achy pain in my eye, but nothing that wasn't, I was able to tolerate it. And Lori's a nurse also. Oh, <laughs> so she's a good candidate anyway, yeah. yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah, and then, um, you know, unlike Lasix, the uh, results weren't overnight. It took um, maybe two to four months before I was actually seeing improvements in my vision. Mm -hmm. And that was really exciting because I could see things that I didn't even know were there before. And so, If somebody is hearing about this for the first time and they're on the fence, they don't know if they should research it more, maybe talk, call the doctor and ask them, what would you say to that person as far as the difference this has made in your life? Oh, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I. I just, uh, I never wanted to have to wear glasses or contacts again. And um, I had Lasix that lasted for about 10 years. Then I started losing vision. And I wasn't a candidate for Lasix or PRK. And just by chance, I found Dr. Motwani. She's, uh, she had surgically induced keratoconus, okay. corneal ectasia. Mm -hmm. So the original procedure had caused her corneas to bulge forward, just like keratoconus, and warp them. So we had to actually reconstruct the corneas and then freeze them in a place with corneal cross-linking. Is anybody a candidate for this, or do you have to be at a certain age and have a certain amount of damage? Because that's certainly been one of the issues with LASIK. You can only tell once someone comes into me. Okay. And so what happens is we can pretty much work on almost anything as long as it's enough tissue. This is very exciting to hear about. This is revolutionary, and I think I really, I really love what your patients are calling this the bionic eye. Yeah, you know, it's this is one of those things, honestly, uh, I've spent about three years straight just research research and I stuck sort of brought myself out and said we really need to let more people know about this so mm -hmm. thanks for having us on because this just isn't available mm -hmm. you know there's not many people doing this and there's hundreds of thousands of people that need this and there just is no one else out there we appreciate your vision we're of course going to link all this on our website because I know that we are sparking a lot of interest right now so mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to you thank for you. getting the, the site back <laughs> and thank you to the doctor for your vision because like I said a lot you're helping a lot of folks out there so thank you very can't much. wait to see what you got next up your sleeve because i have a feeling you do anything as long as